guys we hit the 5k up in here that is reason to celebrate it feels like only yesterday we hit that big 1000 subscriber milestone to think we're already at 5000 to thank you guys i'm going to do another user requested video thanks gamer lion your idea came roaring to the top <clears throat> Yeah, look, I, I thought it was a pretty good idea, that suggestion. So we're going to be drawing character poses. Now, not simply how to draw them, but also how to draw them better. Hit the subscribe button to become one of the cool people and like this video to help me battle that dreaded YouTube algorithm. It really does help probably more than you think. Okay, let's go. Well, before we can really talk about how we're going to pose things, it's probably a good idea to get the proportions right. So I think a good place to start is maybe you've seen that old textbook thing of how characters should always be, you know, there should be seven heads in height total or eight heads in height in total or something like that. And that is true for proportions. That's probably what you want to go for. What I'm going for here with the drawing cartoons uh, I'm gonna go for four. I'm gonna go for only four high, okay? So this is gonna stay the head, but then the torso is gonna come down to just a little bit inside of this circle here. So if I draw like a little box to represent the torso, just, just for a visualization's sake. And then the legs are gonna be the rest of the height. So the feet are gonna be, you know, the bottom of the feet are gonna be down here. Let's draw some actual feet in so it looks like a, a person and not some kind of totem pole. Let's draw a little divider down there. So it's a bit messy, but we've got a, a pretty good example of a a cartoon character with a nice big kind of cartoony head and a short torso and a stout pair of legs. Now obviously if you're going for something that's more of an anime style, then yeah, you definitely want to go for many more heads in height, but honestly for Disney-esque cartoons, pretty much anything that you would expect to see on Cartoon Network or Nickelodeon, anything like that. Generally the characters are quite short, they don't tend to make them too kind of, you know, long down here. Sometimes they do, some characters kind of break the rule and they're their own thing, but that's that's the nature of cartoons I guess. So just for this exercise it's probably a good idea to remember we're just drawing things that are four heads in height. So with that in mind I'm going to move on to the next thing we're going to talk about. So here I'm going to show you a pretty simple exercise that is, it's not really a do and uh, do not. <laughs> it's not. It's not really this. It's more a case of do and do better. So this is not necessarily wrong, but if you want to do better cartoons, you do it this way. So I'm going to show you what I mean. I'm going to start off with the forehead thing I was just talking about. That's just to get my, pro uh, my proportions right. I'm going to cheat here because I'm using software and I can actually duplicate these if I remember how. Oh yeah, copy and paste is a thing. All right, so <laughs> so I'm just gonna build the four circles here. If you're using um, uh, not software, if you're drawing on a piece of paper, you can just use coins and just move the coin down and keep drawing the four shapes over and over and over again. So here I'm gonna do the same thing I did last time. I'm going to draw a small divider right at the top of this third circle, kind of build myself out a, a rough shape of a torso, just so I know where the torso is, and then I'm going to go from there. So I'm going to draw a character who's just kind of stood facing the camera. So I'm going to draw a little kind of uh, cross shape on his face, so that we have a midpoint vertically and horizontally. This is a really, really common trick. This is something that you're probably going to want to do all the time whenever you're drawing cartoons. It just kind of it's very, very helpful for placing features like eyes and noses. But uh, uh, that's not about that today. We'll 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 do that in another tutorial. So this guy. Just going to draw a couple of arms at his sides here, or her sides, haven't really decided the the, the gender of this character, but um, it it's sides. So I'm just going to draw a couple of arms either side, elbows kind of poking out, this one's coming out a bit too far actually, so let me just fix that real quick. Symmetry is fairly important, but not essential in cartoons. And speaking of symmetry, a little line of symmetry down the middle so I know where my midpoint is. And uh, so now I'm just going to draw a couple of legs. Okay, so this this is the do, okay, this is the one where it's like, it's not necessarily wrong, but there's a way better way of doing it. So, this is like, this is this is not wrong. You can draw this if you want, and your cartoon's gonna look fine. We've just got some nice legs that are equally wide as each other, more or less anyway. They would be if I went over it and finalized it. And make sure those feet are on pretty, pretty even level as well, unless the characters add a bit of a perspective. Um, but our character's facing towards us, 
for the sake of simplicity. So these legs have to be pretty even. Okay, so there's nothing really wrong with this, but I'm going to show you how to draw this in a more interesting way. So it's all about curving. That's that's the if you take nothing else from this today, I want you to remember that curving your drawing instead of sticking to rigid uh, straight lines like I have in this drawing is very very important. So I'm going to show you exactly what I mean. So I'm going to keep this head exactly where it is. I'm going to leave the head alone. And then when I get to the second circle, don't forget, you may want to draw a line here just to kind of help you remember where the bottom of the torso is going to be. When I get to here, I'm going to draw a line that just kind of curves out like this. Just a little bit, not too much. Okay. Now, do you remember here, I drew a line of symmetry straight down the middle of his torso. His torso is looking straight at us. This guy's torso is not going to be doing any such thing. It's going to be pointing a bit to the side. Okay, so with that in place, I'm going to plan out the rest of my drawing. I'm just going to, again, etch in the shape of a torso here, just very gently with my uh, pencil, my digital pencil. Okay, and notice how there's a bit of a slant in his torso automatically, just kind of from that. You see what I mean? This side's actually a little bit taller than this side, and having that angle kind of helps you to visualize that. So this shoulder is going to be ever so slightly uh, lower down or more towards us than this one. So now moving on to the legs, I'm going to draw the very, very back of his leg over here, over well, well, this side of his leg over here. I'm going to draw a foot that's coming out like that. Look at that. It comes right out from those circles. It's going right outside of the boundaries. And we're going to draw it right up to here where his legs meet. And this other leg, I'm going to give it a bit of a curve. And again, another kind of foot's just kind of there. And again, the inside of the leg, bit of a curve, again. No straight lines, got a bit of a bend to it, bit of a bend to it. And now, I'm going to draw this arm, just kind of resting there again. And this one is going to look smaller, because it's further away from us than, uh, than this arm. And now, for the face, we're going to draw... this shape again but this time it's kind of bending this way and notice how this line hasn't really changed this middle one hasn't really changed but this one is curving a bit to the right and that immediately tells us he's facing this way so this is like an improved version of this this is okay this is good okay what about making it really really kind of dramatic and, and over the top you do this again but you exaggerate it even more okay so i'm going to do it over here I'm going to get those four circles in just for the sake of, uh, of getting proportions right. Let me copy and paste these again, just to show you. Okay, so this I'm using purely as an indicator of how tall my character should be. Okay, don't get locked into these circles too much or your character really is just going to kind of stay fairly static. This one's still a bit static, but not too much so. And this one's very static. The character is bounded to the circles that we originally drew, okay? So this is just a height indicator. To be honest, what might be helpful is if you only use these circles to indicate how tall they should be, draw a line at the bottom for the floor, okay? That's the floor that we're looking at right there. And that means, once you've done that, you actually don't need any of these circles in the middle. Oh. I, uh, I've, I've got my layers mixed up, bear with me a second. So you don't need any of these anymore. So if you're finding it distracting, working with those circles in place, and even I do, and I've been doing this for years, you can erase those now, because that's how tall our character needs to be. So the waist is going to be about this level. And now you're really, really free to just kind of express yourself and go crazy with those curves. So I'm going to bring the torso out way over here. Look how far out that is compared to this, and especially compared to that. That doesn't curve at all. That's just a straight line. This one's coming way out. And I'm just going to kind of carry on and, and draw the sigmoid shape. Well, not a sigmoid shape, more of like a C shape. All the way down to the floor. And now I can kind of go crazy with the pose. So we've got his uh, torso really, really sticking out. Going to give it a bit of a fold like that. Okay, bit of an arrow shape at the back. Chest really, really stuck out. Belly stuck out a little bit. I'm even going to raise an arm, because why not? Like he's like he's saying something. There you go, a bit of a thumb there. Give this character a bit more action, rather than just having the hands at the hips. Again, there's nothing really wrong with having the hands at the hips, but it's way more interesting if our, if our character looks like they're interacting with something. So this is just a really good kind of catch-all tip. 
So this one I'm going to keep at the waist because I want to give this character kind of a sense of attitude. So maybe they're presenting something, maybe they're giving some kind of a talk. I want to put a little speech bubble. Hi, anything you want in there. And now for the legs. Now the legs are tricky because you need to make sure your character at least looks like they're stable and kind of touching the ground. Um, but you can really run away with it and go crazy because it is a cartoon and you can break the rules of physics quite a lot. So I'm going to kind of follow this around, follow the curve, and then draw this shoe. I'm actually going to make that a bit further out, a bit lower down. There we go. To about there, okay? And now this other one, I'm actually going to start by drawing the foot. And this isn't something I have done often in my tutorials uh, so far, but for this particular tutorial, I think it's way easier. So I'm going to start by just kind of etching out an oval shape. And you'll notice something about this oval. It's a bit wider at this end than it is at this end where the heel is. Okay, that's the front of the foot. That's the heel down here. And if it helps to visualize it, you can cut it across here. And it now, it immediately looks like the sole of a shoe. So if that helps you to visualize it, you can now kind of bring this up to here. And you've probably seen this pose in uh, Disney cartoons quite a lot where they raise one foot and but the other one kind of stays down. So again, I'm going to kind of add a bit of a top to that shoe. So it actually looks like a foot and not like a, a bean that's floating into the abyss. And now I'm just going to kind of bring this up and join it with the waist. Okay, and, and look how much better that is compared to this and especially compared to this. These aren't necessarily bad, but this is way more expressive and it gives us a lot more freedom in making a cartoon more unique and just genuinely looking more impressive. I will point out one thing, I think I've raised this foot a little bit too high, so don't be afraid to erase things that you feel don't look right first time, because let's face it, Getting things right first time is kind of crazy. Who, who even expects that? <laughs> don't expect to get things right first time. I don't. I've been doing this for years. So there we go. I just fixed that foot a little bit so it's not quite angled so high. And I already like the look of that. So just encourage you to erase things and start again if they don't quite go to plan the first time around. And you can definitely tell I'm winging this. <laughs> but now we have a way more interesting character. We have a kind of three-quarter shape so we can draw things at angles inside. I'm going to draw some eyes, one eye a bit further than the other. Let's draw a lip that's coming out like this. Okay, so I'm just having a bit of fun with this now. And this is way more fun to draw on. That's the other thing that's worth mentioning. This is way more fun to draw on uh, than, than this is. Characters that are facing the camera are generally not super fun to draw on, at least in my opinion. Again, it's okay and it's not necessarily wrong, but this is just way better looking and it's more fun to kind of experiment with what clothes the character's wearing or what features they have. Do they, do they have wings for some reason? Are they holding some kind of object? Uh, are they talking to someone else? Are you going to draw somebody else? Okay.
Thank you.